So this is the band remover, and you can see the plastic uh, tip insert at the end. That's important um, in that we're putting a fair bit of force onto the uh, plastic. If you have the metal there, there's more likelihood of that um, acrylic uh, cracking. The sharp tip, if you just show in the mouth where that would be placed, and that's where we'd want to be placing our band remover. So um, if you, there's not an undercut in that region because of excess glue, etc., sometimes it's worthwhile getting a high-speed handpiece uh, with a um, diamond uh, burr or tungsten carbide burr and just cutting a groove to give you some purchase point uh, called a sluice groove to uh, remove the hyrax. So, so on the other side as well, the same region. This side will be right there. Oh, there it is. So along here, so there and there. So we're behind the reversible face mask hook and we're getting anterior leverage. After we've done anterior leverage, we will have to go right at the back of the hyrax and do posterior leverage. So maybe you can show right down the back there. Good. Excellent. All right. Now, if you're doing this in a mixed dentition case, which is normally the case, um, you always warn the parents that uh, any deciduous teeth that are about to fall out will of course come up with the hyrax. Because if you don't tell them that, then some parents get upset thinking, why did you take that uh, tooth out unnecessarily? Well, it was a tooth that was gonna fall out anyway. But if you warm before you perform, less uh, chance of any, any dramas. Purchase. You're going to hear a little crack. Yeah, a little crack. A little squeeze. That's it. And one more crack. You okay? Yeah, good girl. There's more, remember, I warned you there's more noise than actual That's drum. Right. Yeah. It almost feels as though someone's cracking a tooth in your mouth, but it's not. It's the glue being. Yeah. So then we move across the other side. So we've got that side like, cracked, and it's just. <laughs> The left side's out, yep. the right side's about to come out. Really. And you can see how with this new design, they're easier to remove than the old design we talked about. The acrylic doesn't crack, but you can see how good this 3N multiband cement is. Uh, and that's why we'll never etch the teeth before you use it. That's good, perfect. Well done. Some suction now for getting a visit. So that's the expander out. So now we're removing the remaining cement using the multi-fluted tungsten carbide burr in the reduction head handpiece, which we call the double red band handpiece. Um, the force of this, or the torque of this, is in between a high speed and a low speed. We ignore the interproximal for now. We'll, we'll, we'll so, surface. so we're going to clean the uh, tooth surface, and then the interproximal will go around with a scaler. So we look at where Monique started, it was a class 3 maxillary deficiency case. Uh, she's had a bonded hyrax face mask, upper partial bracketing 3 to 3. Today we've taken the hyrax out, so hence she won't need to wear the face mask anymore, and we're bracketing the 7654 to maintain our arch width. You can see the um, cross bite that was originally present. Um, and you can see what improvement this has had on the vertical. Once we take the hyrax out, the bite actually closes. And as it closes, it closes over the cross bite, which gives us very good stability. Yep, so you can see the front teeth have now come over. Um, and what we'll be continuing to do with light coil is continuing to drive them forward. Uh, if need be, and we have late growth of the mandible, this could always become a John Lynn technique, where we have tads in the lower jaw with class one pull to continue to correct the class three jaw pattern.